Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of our Prime Talk. Today I'm having a special guest that I wanted to have for a long time. We're having Elizabeth Green. Uh, Elizabeth is the co-founder of Jungler. And Jungler is a leading Amazon advertising agency. So uh, Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited. I've listened to previous episodes you've done with other guests. Um, nice. And so I was excited to get on here too. It'll nice, nice. Very, very exciting. Uh, yeah, so today's episode is going to be the story of you, the story of Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Green. You're going to share with us everything. You know, where were you born? Where did you grow up? What was it like for you to grow up? Um, How did you begin your professional career? Station to station until we reach to where you are today, especially with the world of e-commerce. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's go. All right. So where were you born? Uh, I was born in South Florida. And for people who don't know the area, I tell them Fort Lauderdale. Um, for people who do know the area, it's Davie, which is really a suburb. It's like, it's probably a good 30 minutes from downtown at least. 30 minutes while going west? Yes. Closer to the Everglades? Yes. Got it. Very, very cool. Okay, South Florida growing up. And then um, what kind of environment uh, you had at home growing up? Your parents, what kind of industries were they involved with, for example? Yeah. So my dad is an interesting character. He's an electrical engineer. Um, and he loves tinkering with things. He likes, he worked for a long time, um, for Motorola, which is actually how my parents ended up down South. Both of them grew, grew up kind of in the Southern States, um, Florida Southern, but it's not like Southern. <laughs> it's definitely a, a different world, um, from like your traditional Southern States, but, uh, yeah, so they moved on there. So he likes, um, finding out problems. His favorite thing is like, he said, give me a problem and don't tell me the solution. Tell me the problem. And I like, he likes finding the solution. Um, so I, I like to tell a funny story. I had a friend for a sleepover once and they walked in, um, and my dad's sitting at the kitchen table with a device with electrodes hooked up to his head, to the device. <laughs> um, and this is normal for me. This is not weird. So my friend was like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm measuring my brain waves. And she was like, oh, and then later on we're conversing and she's like, wait, he's serious. I'm like, yeah, she's measuring brainwaves. Like this is, so um, grew up with that. My mom stayed at home um, and there was six of us kids and we were homeschooled. Um, so it was a very large, very tight knit family. Um, so yeah, good environment. Hold on, homeschool. So what's the philosophy behind that? You didn't go to public school? I went to private school for half a through once when my mom was pregnant and she got bad morning sickness. So um, we went there and then we tried out another school. It just didn't work out so well. Um, so we went back to homeschooling. Actually, the South Florida homeschooling community is huge. So although like still technically homeschooling, um, like we had dances, we had prom, we played sports. There's a whole like... Um, south florida like homeschool sports league that actually like, competes with other private schools and stuff it's pretty cool i had no idea i didn't realize it's so robust uh, okay so you graduated high school this way being homeschooled throughout mm -hmm. yep oh it's very unique very unique okay so also while growing up did you have any kind of entrepreneurial uh, endeavors and you know selling lemonade trying to uh, trying to help making a dollar or two for yourself or anything like that no none none whatsoever um, so I definitely count my upbringing and my homeschooling with, um, my, I don't want to say ability. I don't want to sound like arrogant, but I've always had a knack for being able to find information and being able to compile information. Um, because with a lot of the homeschooling, it was like, literally when I was in high school, my mom sat down and she's like, all right, we need to do the curriculum. Like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to have you help me plan the curriculum. Um, so I went through and was like, all right, I want to do this. Okay. We need math. Like, let's find the math. Um, and so a lot of it was very self-directed learning, um, which is consequently actually <laughs> I'm homeschooling my own kids and I'm really wanting to impart that like self-directed learning to them. Cause I think it's a huge asset. Um, I always say like being able to, to learn how to learn, um, I think puts most people far. And I feel like most entrepreneurs are very like lifelong learners and I, definitely credit that as starting um 
when I was in school. I mean, like random stuff, like my mom got a VHS tape of how to code HTML. And so like literally like sitting down watching VHS and taking notes and then like going to the computer. I never did anything with that. And I wish I would have gotten farther than like, you know, that one VHS tape. I probably could have asked her like, hey, can we do this? And she would have bought it for me. Um, so like just things like that, I, I was, was like interested. In, oh, let me like figure this out. Let me test this. Let me try Sounds this. Like an so investigative, investigative quality. Yeah. You're, you're very good at um, you have your natural curiosity. And, and but you're able, even more importantly than that, you're able to get that piece of information that will make sense to you. And you pu- keep pulling on that thread and you get to other dimensions. And, and that's basically the learning experience. And that makes you, uh, you know, more advanced, uh, you know, uh, and it's, it's even more important later on in life when in the professional world, just keep on solving challenges and problems to your organization, to your clients' needs and, and things of that nature. But you also mentioned you are six kids in the family? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm the oldest. There are six of us. Um, four girls, two boys. Four girls, two boys. We're the opposite. I'm with four boys and two girls on my side. I'm also with ah. six kids. So interesting. Cool. It's like, almost like a mirror uh in a different universe okay pretty cool so all right so you graduate high school you have an investigative kind of quality is really good with uh you know finding information and then self-learning and things of that nature did you go to college university at all or no so i did start college um so everyone always asks you growing up like what do you want to be when you grow up what do you want to do um and it's not in vogue to say i want to be a wife and a mom Um, As a woman, you get side-eyed a little bit, but honestly, that's what I wanted. Um, I really liked the dynamic. I grew up in a very traditional Christian household, um, and we had an amazing childhood, and I really liked that my mom was present all the time. My dad supported us. Thankfully, he had a good enough job to be able to do that, Um, and that's what I wanted. Um, but if you tell anyone of that, they're like, that's all you aspire to. <laughs> and so, so I would say, like, oh, let me, like- yeah, let's touch that nerve or element. So yeah. for you is because the coziness, the warmth, the love, if you're like, yeah. what's well, better than that kind of thing, or like, I'll yeah. settle for that. What's the, what's yeah. The so that, that's what I wanted. I, I wanted to be a mother and I wanted to be able, I wanted to be able to homeschool my own kids. Actually, that's something I decided before me and my husband got married or even met. Um, and so But with that, I didn't want to be the woman that's sitting around waiting for a husband. I didn't know when that would come. Um, Turned out for me, it came sooner rather than later. But um, I didn't want to just, oh, okay, I'll I'll wait for that to happen. So I did did start going to college. Um, I was going to get a degree in... um, teaching I was gonna I figured like I liked kids and made sense you know get a degree in teaching yeah started started college started going for a degree in teaching you know like I was like all right I want to have kids this makes sense for me um and so I didn't plan on meeting my husband honestly um I was single I took a road trip with a friend uh up to meet her brother in Georgia so this is around um Fort Benning area so Columbus Georgia they ran a paintball field on 100 acres, randomly enough. Um, and her brother worked with um, her, his cousin, which is now my husband. Um, so we both weren't really looking for anyone, but met each other on the road trip. And we're like, hey, yeah. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> um, I'm interested. And so that just kind of blossomed from there. Um, and I you also of- you also mentioned that he comes from a very entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial yeah. uh, you know family background. So in a nutshell, what kind of industries or involvements were they doing? Uh, all the above. <laughs> so when I met them, uh, are you um, married to they, Warren's Buffett grandson or something? Uh, they've just tried just about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so prior to um, them moving up to Georgia, it was supposed to be their retirement, and it didn't officially become that because his family has a very hard like. They can't do nothing. Um, so they had gone up there. They had sold some businesses in uh, the area we live now, which is Ocala. Um, it's like a central Florida, just south of Gainesville. Um, but they had some businesses here, sold them, moved up there, bought a gorgeous hundred acres. Um, talk about moving fast. They're like, hey, let's go look. Um, so they went up and they found the property and fell in love with it. And like, I think made an offer that day and just decided to move up there. Um, so when I had met him, they were running a paintball field and that was their business. Um, previously they had like an aluminum and construction company. They sold cars. They sold, they've sold sheds. 
before my husband was born, um, I think my in-laws like ran a pet store, run a truck stop. I mean, like <laughs> you name it, they've probably tried it. Yeah, it seems like they, you know they have the confidence to try things and, and try to yeah. you know explore and, and, and develop businesses. It's uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go back to narrative. narrative. Uh, you took a few uh, semesters. You meet your husband. Uh, you get married. So kind of life begins. Um, and I guess you had a few kids, but and I want to I guess I uh, want to stop also slap the years on it. So. Uh, what was the year where you started to begin your, I guess, professional career slash Amazon or oh, e-commerce career? Well, what's the evolution there? I'm trying to remember date ranges. Um, so that did not start until, I want to say 2018. I think we yes, started so. looking at Amazon 2017-ish. And we said um, we started looking at Amazon, meaning you and your husband, or you and a friend, what was the... Yes, so me and my husband, um, so got married, had quite a few kids, um, and How many then kids, if, uh, if you want to share? Six, you already have six children? I already have six children. Wow, congratulations, beautiful. Okay, good. I, yeah. I, I have three, I'm expecting hopefully one more, so I'm trying to catch up, Amazing. good job. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, six yeah. children, and then 2017, you and your husband, what happens? Yes. Yeah, so he's always worked with the family business, which is amazing. Um, when we got married, he, we, he ran paintball, which is awesome. It's a weekend gig. So you work throughout the week, but you know, it's very, very flexible. And then you have weekends and I helped him like run the counter there and, you know, just kind of, I've always been like a facilitator. So I definitely like help him if you, if you need help with something, calling someone, doing something. Sure. Like, you know, I just kind of helped out with stuff. Um, never any official capacity, just as like, Hey, you know, help the family. Um, and so when we moved back to Ocala, um, he, for the first time went out and got a regular job, which is like what everyone does. Like everyone goes out, you work and come home. And I was like, well, this sucks. <laughs> like you're gone. But for the first couple of years of our marriage, it was very much like intertwined. So we were always kind of like looking to get back there. Um, whenever that would happen, you know, we weren't really sure. We didn't, we weren't sure what that looked like, um, heard about Amazon and we're like, oh, this seems like a great opportunity. So how'd you hear about um, Amazon? I wonder. I, I don't know. My husband probably heard it from a friend and then looked up a YouTube video and kind of got into it. Um, so we started out, you know, like I said, I want to say, I want to say it was 2017 or 18. The year's kind of blur, but, no worries yet. um, yeah, that was, I think, crap, I think it was before, that's right, that was before I had the twins, some point, I was pregnant a lot. <laughs> so what was, <laughs> God bless you, so hold on, so what was the first movie you guys, uh, first move you guys made on Amazon, what'd you do? Yeah, so just retail arbitrage, I'm um, going to stores, so I'm like, hey, let's drag all the kids and let's scan stuff and see what we can sell, sold a couple of things, and I say we got into it, how nobody should get into it. It wasn't like, hey, we're going to treat this like a business. It was like, hey, here's a side gig. Like, let's try a couple things and see if it works. Mm -hmm. um, retail arbitrage, you definitely can kind of do that. Um, so that kind of got us familiar with the platform. Um, and then as far as um, after that, we're like, okay, so private label sounds great. So, you know, talking to some and I want to say, like, I think we maybe broke even again. It was like, hey, let's try this thing. Let's sort of see if it works. Um, and we didn't have as much capital to invest as we really needed to. So how um, long so it did never... it take you? How long were you doing retail arbitrage until you tried uh, private label? A few weeks, a few months, a year? I would say a couple months. Got it. Okay. Something like that. Um, I, when we started getting into, you know, like at, at that point, it wasn't like a complete gold mine. Like you still definitely can make it work. And I Still think there are, I mean, there's definitely people who still make retail arbitrage work, but it's becoming like harder and harder. Um, and so we didn't get into it, I would say, when like everything was super booming. And we, I think a lot of people were figuring it out. And then again, we didn't have really the capital we would need to like really invest in it. Um, I think we definitely, yeah. So, like I said, it, it was kind of like, hey, let's try this out. Um, and, you know, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. And then we had more kids. And then I'm trying to remember, I, th I think that was in between my number four and then the twins. So I have twin boys um, who are three and a half now. Um, somewhere in between there, um, we, I think that wound down also because the kids and things. Um, and then we started hearing about more and more people um, needing help with ads. So again, this was like 2018, 19, when we really started getting into like delving into the ads more. Um, and yeah, so, and then I delved in more than he did. Um, one, cause 
I didn't have a lot of extra time, <laughs> but you can watch videos and you can listen to trainings while you fold laundry and do dishes. And he was at the job site all day. Um, his father, my father-in-law uh, is a general contractor in Florida. So he was helping him on this construction end. So with always so the, the, angle, the corporate job that he had before you kind of fade off into helping, uh, you know, the construction company. Yeah. Every, yeah. So then he, he jumped back in um, to family business. It's, I mean, because it does provide a lot of flexibility. It's great working with the family. Like my in-laws are amazing. So that's good. I left out there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what he was doing. And so he was like, all right, we, you know, we should, we should try pushing more on this ads thing. And I was like, great, you know, I guess I'll figure it out. Um, and <laughs> to be perfectly frank, the conversation when we started to officially like, okay, we're going to treat this as a business, you know, we're going to get official with it. Um, the conversation was because I was always the facilitator. I was always the one like behind the scenes, like he says, go. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Um, and so he said like, hey, we need to do this. I, I distinctly remember him coming home and him saying, okay, we need to like officially do this. Like we should, you know, get the LLC, do the thing, make a website. Like we need to make this official. And I remember saying, I can't, I can't. It's terrifying. Really? Because it's um, on you. Um, this time it's on you. Because I'm like, it's it's on me. And I said, I'm spending other people's money. And it's if I don't do a good job, that's terrifying. <laughs> like I, I don't think I could do it. And he said, No, we need to do it. And I said, Fine. Okay. I'll well, let's step back, out. let's step back a little bit. So let's get the context uh, in place. So he's in construction. You just had uh, you know, in, you know, between pregnancies and having the tr- twins. You did arbitrage, but you're doing private label. Uh, you can feel you could do more, but it's more of a thing of a capital. You don't have enough capital to invest, but you are confident enough that you have the ability to understand the data component properly, mm-hmm. especially on the PPC and advertising side of things. And if, if with the right uh, you know, sellers or brands you can partner with, well, they have the, the ambition, they have the capital, they have the, the, the resources they need, uh, but they they're, they lack the resources of know-how, how to uh, mm-hmm. engage and manage in, in PPC and advertising. That is the opportunity that you start in front of you. That was kind of the, the, the main ingredients yeah. or something else. Yeah. So I started, I started, you know, working on accounts, digging into the data. I'm like, oh, okay, like this makes sense. Like I can make sense of this. Like looking at the reports. Um, I I definitely say like so Amazon ads, or I think a lot of pay-per-click in general, it's enough marriage of like hard data. Um, so science mixed with a bit of art, like kind of coming up with strategies, like knowing who to target, like, okay, I want to rank for this keyword. Can I ace and target all of the products that are ranked on this keyword? How does that influence? Um, and you're, you're able to like, it's fun. I mean, at this point I can say it's fun. When I, when I was looking at making it an official thing um, and like, all right, I am going to offer this service and I'm going to call myself qualified to offer this service. I guess that was the part where I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm obviously confident in it now. Like, I mean, we're getting good results and I, I'm at this point, I can say like, I know my stuff, you know, put me up against anyone. I know my stuff. Um, at that point, I guess it was terrifying to at least say like, Hey, I'm qualified to run this for you. Um, and I don't think it's because I lack the ability. I lack the confidence. Okay. So 2019, you have the discussion, you need a little mm-hmm. bit of a push, you know, for, for the leap of faith that, you, yes, you can take that responsibility. You're going to own it. You're going to spend on the uh, other organizations' money and people's money to create success, not mm-hmm. because it's uh, you're in the spending business, you're in the revenue yeah. uh, gener- generation business and hopefully profitable. So well, what was the baby steps you took? Uh, what was the evolution of uh, Jungle as we know today? Yeah, definitely. Um, So it really just started out being helpful. Um, um in facebook groups i mean for me it's been like a very much a learning experience on all ends um you know deciding like how to market yourself how to appear confident how to talk to potential clients like i I don't from come from a corporate world i don't come from any of those worlds so in some ways i think it served me well um because like my marketing strategy is just be helpful (laughs) to people i find the more helpful i am um, the more it seems to come back in full, in multiple ways. So um, that's just how I started was like, Hey, let me help you out. And there's been a lot of accounts where I'm like, Hey, I, I don't ask anything. Like, let me audit. Like I don't, or if you ask a question, I don't need to jump in and say like, Hey, let me run your ads. It's like, Oh, Hey, I know the answer to that question. And oftentimes that would come back of like, Hey, I've been struggling with this. Like I've had, um, other accounts that ended up being clients where it's like, I've just been helpful for 
months on end, you know, maybe they'll you know, ask a question here or there. I'm like, cool. I happen to know the, if I know the answer and it takes me two minutes to give you the answer, I see no issue with me just like sending you that message. Um, so that that's kind of where it started is really grassroots and then grown from there. Got it. So, you know, give us challenges or milestones for jungler along the years, maybe a case study, a success story of uh, something was so wow and anything like that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there been a lot. So for me, um, I think the most growing experience has been um, growing the team recently. So that, that's kind of what I'm focused on currently. I'm still in accounts. I still feel like at some point I like, I just like, I've had a couple of times where I'm like out of accounts and I'm like, oh, I want to test this or I want to do this or I want to look at this. And so I'm, I'm still kind of in it. And I feel that gives me an ability just to speak to, you know, if people are asking a question, I'm like, hey, I know that answer. I know that beta. I know, you know, kind of what's going on with that for allowing to get insights into that. Um, so milestones, I mean, definitely um, we've signed several accounts and had, you know, great success with those. I, I really enjoy partnering with clients who know their stuff and just are missing the ad piece um, because like the more competitive Amazon becomes, I find the more savvy sellers have to become. So, you know, a smaller account might say like, hey, my ACOS is this in general. Um, larger clients are going, hey, what is this product doing? How is this doing? They're looking at their account in very, very specific ways, um, which is amazing. And that's honestly like the, the better you know that your numbers, the more you understand it, um, the more, you know, you're going to succeed overall because you, the, I always say like the truth is the truth, regardless if you are actually like confronting it or not. Um, so the sellers who are like actually confronting like, oh, I'm profitable here. I'm not. Um, and then just looking for that ad piece. So say, hey, I'm more profitable here. Can we push harder? I'm less profitable here. So can we pull back? And, you know, them just giving us those directives and us like acting on them um, has been, I mean, it's definitely a challenge because the clients who are looking like that, like they're looking at every piece of their account. So you better have it on point, um, which has been a great learning and growing experience for us. Like we always managed accounts well, but having to get like so specific with what we're doing um, has created, you know, a lot of good growth for clients, um, but also, you know, just, we just have to be good at what we do. Um, we've, <laughs> some of the other things we've done is we've signed, we ended up signing um, quite a few clothing brands within a short period of time, um, which has definitely been, um, I would say a learning experience <laughs> for sure. We're doing well with them now. Um, and, you know, we've, I've been growing those accounts continuously, but clothing creates its own challenges just due to how many SKUs and size variations and color variations. And so then having to, you know, dig into accounts and be able to grow, especially with clients that, again, these are very savvy sellers. So they're looking at things like on a listing level, um, like how is this product grouping doing? How is this product grouping doing? And then us having to build strategies out to be very specific in an account that's so big. Um, has been great so now when I have a seller come to me they're like oh I have like you know 100 we got 50 products I'm like we've done bring a couple thousand like we're yeah, good yeah. <laughs> all right so the scale you're able to manage more skill on your the con level or, or complexities of the con level yeah. with uh, all these variations and uh, thousands of uh, SKUs and you're building the right strategy for advertising so there's no wasteful spending and it's all calibrated properly uh, so that that's uh, interesting uh, you know milestones to, to reach and, and you have a, more of a large spectrum of, 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 of uh, categories they can really uh, fulfill mm -hmm. your duties and then do well yeah. and perform. Um, I want to touch one minute. Um, you know, today we're recording this in 2022. You started, you know, you into the game around 2017 and 2018. Uh, you, I guess you were really drawn into the advertising and data side of things and your investigative um, you know, spirit. W I want you to touch for a moment. Where was advertising 2018? Where is it today? What's that delta? What's the gap? What, a little bit of that evolution as far as you understand or perceive it uh, in, in layman oh, okay. terms as much, as much as possible. Yeah, so I think one of the bigger updates that we saw when I, we were really starting to like really get serious with what we were doing um, was the targeting types being split in the autos. Um, and if you remember like all the way back, there's been a million and 10 updates since then, like sponsor brands video ads have come out. Um, more like insane, more builds out to sponsor display ads, product targeting and sponsor display ads. So what we're finding now is there's more options to um, appear on the platform. There's more places you can appear on the platform. There's more targets that you can like hone in on, on the platform. 
um, which is amazing. So somebody who is like really savvy and like, oh, we can, you know, these work well on this ad type and these work well on these ad types. And we're going to push here and there. Um, you have more incremental control than ever before. Um, that can be daunting for new sellers getting in and like, I don't know what to do because before, you know, we can run an auto and then we take what works in the auto and we funnel that to manual and we call it good. Um, now that strategy, I would say is completely outdated and you're going to, you're going to probably waste a lot of money and leave a lot on the table. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, back in the old days for four or five years ago, simple mechanism. It's like a fast food restaurant with a menu of a burger fries and, and, and a Coke. Everybody's happy and it's kind of working and doing its own yeah. thing. But now today it's more like you come in, the menu is much more robust. Yeah. It's much more pay to play. <laughs> Um, instead of just having the regular yeah. burger, fries, and, and, and uh, a soda, you have uh, health shakes, and you have uh, a steak, and a chicken, and vegan, and all that good stuff, and uh, you got to kind of find yourself in, 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 in the variety of things, and what really uh, gives you a good um, experience, and the, yeah. the experience being a good ROI, return investment, every dollar you put, and trajectory towards, uh, you know, catching the, the attention of uh, Amazon shoppers and consumers on the platform, uh, it's done in the right way because if you just you know a ppc ad it's a keyword pretty straightforward but you mentioned also the display ads and things of that nature where uh, the, then you're you, you know like i said earlier there's science into it but also a little bit of art that creative that is also something you need to be attentive of and also maybe i don't know if you invo uh, get involved with a b testing you try to try all these uh different options in terms of uh, especially when it involves a creative uh, component like in a like a video ad or something right yeah definitely um so unfortunately there's no like that's a question that we often bat around um, with, you know, like kind of fellow people who are running ads at scale, um, other agencies is like, how do you, how do you AB test video ads? How do you AB test headlines and creatives? Because I mean, there's some amazing options when it comes to listings, right? I mean, you can run those AB tests and you can get very definitive data on which one works best mm -hmm. um, with ads, there's no clean way of doing it. So basically we got to do the best we can. And um, kind of the, the way that we do it and kind of the way that, because the two different options would be to run one, see what works, you know, pause that one and run the other one. The, the only difficulty there is that the Amazon platform has kind of nuances and that new campaigns don't always perform as well as old campaigns. So you may have like those initial fluctuations. So at that point, okay, you can test one for like a month and then test the other one for a month, but then you're waiting, what, if you have a couple creatives, like three months to get those tests back, that's not really great. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do at this point is we just kind of run, um, we run the, the ads in tandem. Yep, side to side. Time. Yeah, yeah, so you split the budget. Time. You're saying, let's run the boat, bet on both horses, split the budget. And see over time what performs uh, performs better. If they both perform yeah. well, I guess it's good. You have two winners. If you have one winner, you you know uh, yep. you know recalibrate the chips and run with that. That's good. That's that's good. So see all that nuance of and and, and science and art yeah. all put all together. That's kind of a synopsis of uh, of the evolution of advertising. Okay, so this is where we are today. And looking into the future, where, where do, you, do you see all of this going? What should the sellers be aware of? Uh, what's the right mindset for them to have? Yeah, definitely. I would say going forward is going to be a lot of data. Um, so that's what we've seen continuously. Um, these last couple updates is we're definitely getting more ad creatives. They're putting more like placements in the video ads um, coming down the pike. I have no idea the timeline, but we should also be getting like videos and sponsor display ads. Like, so the ability to do creatives is being maximized. And I think that really speaks to Amazon wanting to grow as the platform that hosts brands. So one, one thing that has been difficult for even a lot of larger brands getting into the platform has been, okay, great. We have this gorgeous brand that has recognition. How do we bring that to Amazon and not completely lose um, kind of who we are and the essence of our brand? Um, so Amazon's giving us more creatives, you know, with storefronts and the ability to like follow brands and posts and, you know, all those good things, the ability to like, you know, email people who are following your brand on your store page. So what we're seeing is them trying as much as they can within the realm that's like, okay, this is still very much Amazon, but allowing brands to get more creative. Um, so I think that aspect is definitely going to continuously play out. Um, but the other thing we've seen is just a lot more data. Um, so we have access like the search query um, in brand analytics came out. I mean, that has like, 
as far as my world, everyone kind of went crazy for that because it's like first party, which is never before available. Um, we have things like brand analytics inside of the ad console that before brands would say like, hey, how am I doing versus my category? Like, am I converting well? What's my conversion rate versus my category? And before it's like, well, unless you want to do a little black hat tactics and pay for something, which to be frank, I don't even know what channels you would go for, for that. Um, there was very little you could actually glean off of that um, where now there is. You can literally go into the ad console, go up to brand analytics, look at your category and say, this is what I'm converting versus, you know, the average in my category, which is huge. Um, so I'm just seeing a, like a lot more reporting coming out. Now they have its beta um, report they released for sponsored brand ads. So for the longest time we were asking like, what is my product performance inside of sponsored brand ads? We could get a breakdown in sponsored product ads. We can get a breakdown in sponsored display ads. We did not have a breakout for sponsored brand ads. And that's been something that a lot of people who are just trying to make sense of numbers have been asking for the longest time. And now we have it in a report, you know, as of, I want to say was a everything I keep saying, I think it was a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago. Like it's like every single week. And all these years, day. it's like a one log day, you know, it's like for yeah. you, it's like a one log day. Cause once you get sucked into this uh, ecosystem and then, uh, you know, e-commerce, Amazon universe, yeah. it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a hell of a ride. And uh, it's, uh, things are so hyper dynamic, keeps on moving. It seems like a one long day, uh, but you forget what you have for breakfast. You know, that's kind of the, yes. <laughs> the attitude and atmosphere. Okay, so as far as I can see, there's more data, more touch points, more KPIs, more consideration of things, more data analytics, complexities, uh, which is good news and bad news. The bad news is yeah. complex. The good news is once you are entangled this complexity, you're able to make better educated decisions and, and perform much, much better. Uh, uh, but that's kind of the challenge there. We're, we're a jungler in your organization yourself. We're kind of trying to, you know, trying to solve and, and, uh, and bring, you know, that value out there to, uh, to the brands and sellers that's selling on Amazon. Uh, okay, I want to start packaging the episode and we'll see what we got so far. So, uh, born and raised in Florida, um, and then uh, you were homeschooled. You're, you know, uh, you're you're uh, the first out of six children. Uh, very tiny family, homeschooled. Your mother was always around, and then you finished high school, and then you wanted to go to college. You went to a few semesters, um, and uh, along the way, uh, you uh, you met uh, your husband and you got married and. Uh, you right away, you know what you wanted, what you wanted is, you know, tiny family, children, uh, had already six, uh, God bless you for that. And then, uh, your husband was kind of, um, you know, uh, trying out other things. You had the, the farm where the, there was a, they had the paintball, uh, business going on, but also he tried kind of corporate jobs, wasn't really feeling it, wasn't really getting, you know, the happiness that he, that he wanted. And you guys opened your eyes out there to see what's going on. You heard from a friend. And uh, Amazon is an option to, to kind of, uh, you know, get into your own business and do things independently. You guys try it out. You start with the retail arbitrage. You go to stores, flip things around just to get by, to get, make some more income. Uh, and then along the way, a few months later, you realize you can also do private label. You did that. You can send more of the complexity, especially more on the advertising side. Because when you're a private label, that's really, every, you know, advertising matters. When you do retail arbitrage, you don't need that calibration because you're lifting, getting a lift from yeah. the, the, the demand of uh, these bigger brands. But, uh, okay, so you move into that, and then your husband eventually settles, uh, uh, you know, uh, to work with family in a construction business, and then you kind of realize that, uh, you know, with your investigative nature, uh, you are uh, being able to uh, explore data, finding data and info, and making an educated decision based on those. Uh, it's up, up to, uh, you know, onto you to bring that value uh, to the, you know, the industry, the community, the sales community. So you open up a business, you're in business. Um, you don't open a display like you know you know you go to main street you see a retail store you see all the mannequins now you so your mannequins were basically bringing value um in the digital form you go to you know communities and facebook groups and so things of that nature just put yourself out there just help help as much as possible mm -hmm. that built up the relationship and whenever the relationship made sense to kind of partner together and you helping uh, you know them out as a client that materialized itself and then over the years you're able to you know, bring me and bring more and more results and more and more categories more and more complexities um and that's kind of where we are today with Jungler solving, you know, the advertising challenges for, for the brands out there on Amazon. Did we, get every, did we get everything correctly so far? I think so. I think so. Very good. Very good. So thank you so much for sharing that. It's, uh, it's been fascinating. I appreciate that. Okay. Now I want to kind of close the, op the episode with two points. The first will be is if somebody wants to kind of reach out and connect, where can they find you? And the last thing will be, what is your message of hope and inspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would say if you want to reach out, so if you want to just learn my brain, 
on ads. Like you're just like, Hey, I just want to like, see what you're thinking about. Um, LinkedIn is the best place to follow me. Um, I put the most content out there. And then if you actually want to be like, Hey, interested in working with us. Um, if you go to our website, which is jungler, J U N G L R.com, um, you'll be able to form. There's a phone form at the bottom. So I'm still doing intakes. You can talk to me. Um, and we'll just see if we can help out. And then as far as inspiration goes, um, so I would say like there's still for people who are okay with digging into numbers. Um, so I say in today's market, you like you definitely need to know your numbers. I wouldn't go about it willy nilly. Um, napkin math is great when you're starting, but you really should know very incrementally like what you're doing, mostly because it, it affects your bottom line and profits. Um, so if you're not paying attention, like if your category gets switched and like your um, what you're paying for fulfillment switches, you know, like that, that can create issues. And so if you're not keeping up with what you're doing, um, that can create, you know, again, problems down the road, um, which you all help fix. <laughs> but, you know, definitely if you can avoid them all together, that would be great. Um, so I would say if you are okay with knowing your numbers, there's still a place for you on Amazon because there's enough larger brands that just haven't, they don't put the love and the effort into every single one of their products because they're so big, they just can't. Um, so there's still places I'm still launching products for clients all the time that are absolutely killing it um, in categories that, you know, can be pretty aggressive. So I would say as long as you are willing to put in the effort, um, there's still, I mean, there's still a definite place for you to grow on Amazon. Amazon is more competitive than it's ever been, but it's also larger than it's ever been. Love it. As long as you're willing to put the effort, you'll find success. So keep your focus, yep. be data driven, focus on the math, focus on how it works. There's a place for you. Go do it. You should do it. Beautiful stuff. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much again for sharing and joining with us today. I appreciate your time. I hope everybody else enjoyed. Uh, stay safe and healthy. Until next time.